Thanks for your company this morning. Supporters of Tony Abbott are continuing to make the case for him to stay in the job as Prime Minister. Now, the, the Abbott camp is saying they've got somewhere between 60 and 70 of the Liberal Party room of 102. It's very hard to be definitive on those numbers because unlike the Labor Party, the Liberal factions are much, uh, much less defined and that there aren't those clear uh, power brokers within the Liberal Party room that are driving these numbers. Certainly not at this point, the numbers aren't very clear at all. As to the fact that they are an in, uh, that at, uh, at this point 16 months into their first term in government, well, clearly not where they want to be. This was Matthias Cormann, the Finance Minister, when I spoke to him just a short time ago. Well, uh, we'd obviously rather we weren't uh, in this position, uh, and it's very important that we clear uh, the air uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, my uh, very uh, strong call to my colleagues is to get behind uh, our leadership team of Tony Abbott and Julie Bishop, to get behind the leadership team that took us uh, successfully uh, to the last election, that took us successfully uh, from opposition back into government. Let's go to the Assistant Treasurer now, Josh Frydenberg, joins me. Uh, another Abbott uh, supporter, Josh Frydenberg. How confident are you that, that Tony Abbott's got the numbers to remain in the job? Well, I think Tony Abbott uh, will remain as Prime Minister. I think this motion will be defeated, and I hope that we all unite as a team and focus on our real opponents, which are not ourselves, but the Labor Party. And uh, we were elected to govern. Uh, there are some cold headwinds uh, in the international economy. It's playing out here at home. But we've also got a plan to boost jobs, to lower the cost of living and to help families. And we just want to get on with it, Kieran. And we're much better off if we're united than if we're disunited. Mr Abbott keeps saying it's the electorate that should hire and fire. But do you think that that has backfired, it could backfire next week when the backbench and, and the, the party room uh, value their, their vote and their, their say when it comes to who should lead your party? Look, I don't think that's top of mind uh, for, uh, for people when they're, when they're voting because uh, it's really an obvious point that the Prime Minister was making, that at the last election when uh, millions of Australians went into the ballot box to, to choose uh, their political party, um, they did so on the understanding if the Coalition won that Tony Abbott would be Prime Minister. And the Liberal Party has never uh, dumped a sitting Prime Minister without, you know, that Prime Minister going at least to, to one election um, in the job. Um, and I don't think we should be starting now. Look, we've made mistakes, Kieran. Uh, we held on to some po unpopular policies in the budget for a bit too long. Clearly the, uh, the knighthood for Prince Philip was a barbecue stopper for all the wrong reasons. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we have also done a lot of really good things and we've got a plan for the future and I just don't think we should be giving our political opponents a leg up by pulling ourselves down. How long should the Prime Minister be given to turn this around, Josh? I think the Prime Minister should be given as long as he wants and as long as he needs. I mean, the next election's over a year away um, and if you look at what we have achieved in just 17 months in office, despite the obstacles we've run into in the Senate. Um, if you look at you know, some of the areas for focus that we've got going into the new year around childcare, cost of living, jobs, and a continued emphasis on national security, it's a full dance card, uh, but it's also one that is really important to the lives of ordinary Australians. What do you say to your colleagues who worry that the electorate has stopped listening to the Prime Minister and to Tony Abbott, that you need uh, Malcolm Turnbull to, uh, to give yourself any chance? Well, I can understand the concern of my colleagues as to where the polls are, but political parties, including coalitions, have been there before. I mean, John Howard was 10 points behind both Mark Latham and Kim Beasley and clawed his way back to electoral victory. Um, I would say to them, the constructive way forward for us is to put some of our concerns on the table, behind closed doors, um, to sit down with the Prime Minister and his senior colleagues and say this is where we can do better. Now, clearly we're already taking heed of some of those lessons, whether it's in um, Susan Lee's um, Medicare reforms where she's going back to talk to stakeholders. Christopher Pine um, has listened to some of the concerns about the higher education reforms and recalibrated that package. 
and you know we're, we're focusing on tax reform, industrial relations, and a few other areas. So um, I, I think my colleagues um, should understand that uh, you know the results in Queensland, the results in Victoria were not the fault of Tony Abbott. There were state issues at play there, uh, but we are conscious that we need to do better. And if we're united, we're much more likely to be able to deal with those challenges. Would you serve in a, in a Turnbull ministry? Well, I don't want to get to that point, but other than saying uh, Malcolm Turnbull's been a wonderful uh, Liberal, a very strong minister. I mean, he's brought the NBN back on budget, back on time. He's somebody who's a good friend of mine, uh, and I think he has a lot to give. Likewise, Julie Bishop, who's been a terrific foreign minister. You know, likewise, um, the rest of the cabinet. But the the issue at hand here, Kieran, is the uh, motion, uh, the leadership uh, spill motion, um, that is before the party room next Tuesday, and I will be strongly uh, voting against that motion. Do you accept that there are? some tensions now at the top level of the government between the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister. Yesterday the Deputy Leader issued a statement saying she was not going to support the spill motion because of her uh, Cabinet solidarity and her, her role as the Deputy Leader. Uh, nothing, uh, you know, no mention of the Prime Minister's performance or, or attributes or, or, you know, why he should remain in the job, just simply her procedural responsibility. It was hardly a ringing endorsement. Well, I know the media is getting fascinated by you know, the use of words here, um, but the reality is Julie Bishop has said that she's against this spill motion and she'll be united with the Prime Minister in that goal. When you take it to that next step, um, I think we're getting into the realm of hypothetical. I do note, however, that the Prime Minister and his deputy, Julie Bishop, will be out on the hustings today in Queensland. That's a good thing. Uh, and you certainly they're united in their approach to this spill motion. Josh Frydenberg will chat to you over the next few days. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me, Kieran. Bye-bye. And as I, I put it to Josh, I asked him, would he serve in the Turnbull Ministry?